Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show. I'm Joe, and this is Joey here. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys these two uh, telescopes here. Uh, they are the same size, but they're kind of a little bit different. As you can see, this one is kind of almost half the size. So this, both of these are 4.7 inch refracting telescopes. Nothing fancy, just your basic doublet acromat. Now this one is 600 millimeter f5, and then this one is 1000 millimeter f8.3. Now, it doesn't matter about the name brand, um, because they're basically made in the same factory to the specs of whatever name brand wants to do it. So, and it, um, I don't want to talk about the mounts on this episode here. So basically, as you heard me say several times, the, I would say up to five inch, or if you haven't heard it, I'll say it again. I would say for most people, up to five inch refractor is probably the biggest you're gonna get. Six inch refractors are huge, okay? It's not gonna be portable at all. So this is a 4.7, well, both of them, and this one being more, this is not even considered a long tube. This is a F8, is considered medium. Now after 10 and over, like F12, 15 and 20, that's considered long. So F8 is only considered medium these days. Um, and you can see it's already kind of big. Uh, and, and kind of, you know, some people that might be semi already getting kind of big uh, for portability. So if you went to the five inch, it would be even a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier than this. Now, what I like about Okay, Joey doesn't want to talk anymore. Why I like this guy is because there are some things in, in space or in the sky that is really, really low power. And I mean really low. Uh, like for instance, the platy star cluster, which a lot of people get it confused with like the small dipper, people who don't know this guy, just because it kind of looks like a dipper. Now, if you watch some of that uh, video, I think it's um, called, I show Angelus the, um, the platy star cluster in a four inch refractor. She, because it was on its side, she says it kind of looks like a question mark. Um, so, for things like that, the Andromeda Galaxy and like the North American Nebula, those things are really huge. You probably need at least a five degree field of view and even more. Now, what's good about the refractor, because it's really um, no obstruction, it's just a lens, unlike a schmidt cassegrain Max Sutov, and even a reflecting telescope, they all have a central obstruction where the secondary mirror bounces the light to the side and that's where you look. So the refractor you can kind of, well if you have the good refractors right in this size they should all come with a two inch focuser where you can put a two inch diagonal and put a low power eyepiece a 32 a 36 maybe a 40 sometimes I even go as low as 56 millimeter eyepiece and that gets me a really low power and a really big field of view. There's a couple other ways to do it with you know, more expensive um, wide field eyepieces, but it ends up being the same too. Some people might argue exit pupil, but I'm not gonna argue that right now. Uh, for me, it does fine. Um, so this one would be a little bit better being an F8. It can get you semi low powers, not as low as this guy for sure, but it can still do mostly. I mean, it could probably, for the, the objects that I set in space, it might be able to do about 98% of everything out there. Get you enough power, but a, a decent wide. There's only gonna be maybe up to five items or a handful of items that it's not gonna be able to capture and because it's too close to it. Sometimes with the, the really big stuff, you gotta, be further out so you can see the full thing. Does that make sense? If you're too close, it's kind of like you're you're looking at it um, really close and you're not going to be able to focus. So it's kind of similar to that. So this guy is um, 
I picked this guy up um, a little while ago and it's for that stuff, for the really, really low power stuff where I can use a 32 millimeter two inch eyepiece, even up to a 56 millimeter eyepiece. Now, I remember one time when I was in a gray zone and I can't remember exactly what eyepiece right now I used and what filter, but I do have a log book journal that if I were to go through it, it would be able to tell me what day, what time, what the year, how the sky conditions, what scope I used. Now at that time I used a four inch F5. So it's just a smaller brother of this. And uh, again, I can't, I can't remember exactly what filter and eyepiece I looked at, but uh, I was able to see the full nebula of the North American nebula. And it is, you know, when you see it visually, and it looks exactly like the photo, that's when it's just amazing. You can see the round part of like the Gulf of Mexico, then it, it, it looks exactly like its name, like the map of North America. But to see it with your eyes is just amazing. But you need a scope that is really, really wide and really low power. Because like I said, it's probably, uh, it could even be up to a six degree field of view, which is, which is really, really large. I don't think this guy will be able to do it, but again, this guy will be a little bit better off in pushing more power since it's a thousand millimeter focal length compared to 600. Now, both of these guys are not really suited for uh, uh, astrophotography, imaging, that type of thing. You could do it. Uh, I've seen some channels do it in acromats, but the problem is with regular acromats, you're gonna have like bluish purplish stars and, and it's not as, pleasing to the eye uh, type of thing, but you definitely could do it, but normally you don't use uh, acromats for imaging, that type of thing. But if you have it and you want to dabble and you want to start in astrophotography, do it. Don't worry about it. I mean, no one's going to, I mean, who's to say anything? It's your hobby. It's your toys, your equipment, do whatever you want. If it makes you feel good, you know, cause a, a 4.7 inch, uh, ED or, or um, Apple Chromatic, uh, just a, a lower quality ED, double it, you know, it would probably be like 2,500 Canadian, that's before tax, and a triplet then would probably be in the 3,000 minimum and up. And that's not even talking about high name brands yet. So it becomes very expensive. So if you have anything this size and you want to do something that's visual, this is more suited, I think, for the entry level uh, adults that are coming or teenagers too, coming into this hobby and they don't want to spend thousands on an Apple chromatic with a fancy lens. You, you know, going this route is great. Being a refractor, you never have to worry like the mirrors on the reflector, collimating them. It's set. It can reach its cool down time in like 20 minutes. Um, this one just gives you huge wide field. This one gives you medium wide field, but also some power to view the planets. Don't worry so much. I've used uh, Acromats for many, many years and it's, it's fine. It, it becomes where once you start using the fancy eyepieces, the fancy telescopes, the fancy lenses, then it's kind of like you don't want to go back. I guess it's like anything. If you have just a Kia car and then you get a Porsche or Ferrari, you're not gonna wanna go down. Or if all your life you were taking transit or the bus and then all of a sudden you started driving, you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna go back on a bus again. Anyway, it's something like that. But for new people, just start with an acromat. Now, I still got a, several telescopes that I borrowed, remember from that last video? Or videos, uh, depending when I release this. But remember that one that I, um, Angelus told me to get rid of everything but one? And then the following couple weeks, I messed with her head and I borrowed several telescopes. So when she came the next week, it was like three times worse. Anyway, I still got a couple. Um, but again, it depends when I'm going to release this video. So why wouldn't I choose something like this? This is a six inch. It's also F5 like that guy uh, and you probably might think well a six inch might actually uh gather more light than something this size right which is true it probably gathers but remember too with its central obstruction um, type of thing it 
and the mirrors not being 99% reflectivity, this guy almost approaches this guy. Also, like I said, the other thing is, with the reflecting telescope, as you can see, you have that uh, secondary mirror. So, which means for some of those things like the Pleiades star cluster, you really have to be, I would say, below 16 power. 16, which is like almost binoculars. Not many telescopes can go between 10 and 16. There's just, it's almost impossible. This one probably could do it. But anyway, some people might be thinking, well, why can't I just use, this is an F5, why can't I put 16 power on that and look at the Pleiades? The problem is, if you go that low on a reflecting telescope, they also make an F4 version, which is shorter. The problem is, there is a low limit as well. And if you go too low on something that has a central obstruction, you're going to see like a black spot, or you're going to see... Uh, the secondary mirror in your image, in the eyepiece. So you can't actually go as low as a refractor of, you know, one that has no central obstruction. So that is the reason why for some of those huge deep sky objects, I got this guy to take up north camping this year because I don't have, you know, I can't do, although this guy can get semi-low, I would say I could probably go... Uh, like, okay, so the formula for this guy would be about 24 power, um, which is the lowest that I can go before I'll see that central spot in the eyepiece. So, as I said, the, the Pleiades star cluster, you need probably maximum 16. So that's already over it. So it just means it's just going to be closer or bigger. It's going to fold the whole eye. Actually, some of it is going to be outside the field of view. Hopefully that makes sense. Or this one... I can put a really low power eyepiece. There's no cent central obstruction, so I can go as low as I want. Uh, anyway, so that's why uh, sometimes you would pick maybe, if you want to see some of that stuff, uh, this type of scope down here, and this guy up here, something like an F8, F10, they can get semi-low, but they can never get as low as something like this, uh, uh, 120 mil F5, a 100 millimeter f5 even an 80 mil f5 um, so those are the benefits of getting uh, you know an acromat which isn't too expensive you could probably find this guy used depending where you live of course I always talk about Canadian cur currency because I'm in Canada but there's something like this on the used market you could probably find for about three hundred and fifty dollars uh, for this uh, shorter guy now this is an older model so it'd be a little bit cheaper than maybe a newer model. Uh, but it's somewhere around there, 350 to 400, and depending what accessories it came with it, what kind of focuser, that type of thing. It's hard to say exactly. But anyway, just wanted to show you guys what two 4.7 inch refractors are good for. For most people, put it on, you know, like this size would be good overall where you can see 98% of everything this guy if you just want the extreme however this guy won't be good for the planets double star splitting so normally when you have a very short tube uh, or rich field telescope you normally have something else that's good at the power then you have this guy that's low power and they kind of complement each other right so um, if you were to get this guy, you probably need something else as well. It should be like a second telescope, not necessarily a first. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next video.